Hello, thanks for joining us today. Oh, Mummy, from Tom Cruise's cursed new movie to an evil monk on an ethnic cleansing rampage in Burma. Welcome to Encore's weekly film show. Do not take evil lightly by saying it will never touch me. Her thirst for power led her down a darker path, one that had to be stopped. And we're joined in the studio by a film critic, Lisa Nesselson. Hello, Lisa. Hi. Now, we're starting with a film that's out in France this week. It's already been described as a flop in lots of other parts of the world. And um, one review I read said, as the beginning of an ongoing series, it's an utter bore. Tell us about The Mummy. <gasps> Flop is too kind. I think we need to get into dead and, uh, sorry, dud. That's, that's an interesting, yes, dud, <laughs> dead dud. Um, you know, there are, but there are individuals who have been waiting a really, really long time to see this. Some might say an eternity. Uh, more than once, uh, characters are heard to intone, there are fates worse than death. And I would be tempted to say that having to sit through this movie might be one of them, <laughs> but that would be hyperbole because it's just that it's not fun. It's not fun at all. Uh, there's only one groovy idea, and that's that's the absolute evil, and really, why should we settle for watered-down evil? I, I insist it be absolute. It takes the form of a woman with two irises and two pu pupils in each eye. That's kind of cool. The title promises relics from ancient Egypt, but we end up in Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization, now known as northern Iraq. And Tom Cruise and his unfunny sidekick are in the U.S. military, but they're also unscrupulous plunderers of antiquities, which they sell on the black market, I think they should actually be looking for better dialogue because what they've been given is worthless. So we get mummies that seem like mummies, but also like zombies and also seem like vampires, a half-baked love story, an absolutely incoherent riff on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde featuring Russell Crowe, an apparent homage to Dr. Strangelove, and lots and lots and lots of unconvincing fight scenes. There's a sandstorm in the heart of London, and there's semi- uh, concerned staring at spots where uh, digitally produced special effects are likely to arrive. Let's take a look. Can't wait. What the hell is that? Go, go, go. That was from The Mummy. The Hollywood Reporter says it's time for Tom Cruise to act his age. Um, he usually picks decent material. Is it time to change? He does usually pick decent material. I tend to enjoy him, but this he's just wasted here. His talents, everyone's talents are wasted. And there's six or seven minutes, it seems, of, of closing credits. So, you know, it takes a lot of people to make a really bad movie. One saving grace is that there's the Rue Champollion here in Paris in the 5th District, which is about a block and a half long. It has three movie theaters on it with seven screens. Mr. Champollion is the guy who deciphered the Rosetta Stone, which uh, enabled us to understand and hieroglyphics, so I can guarantee you that any one of those screens is showing a much better movie than this iteration of The Mummy. <laughs> okay, well now to a film that you love. It's called Nothing Wood, and it introduces us to the Afghan filmmaker and actor Salim Shaheen. He's possibly one of the most prolific um, filmmakers in Afghanistan, if not the entire world, apparently. Um, tell us more. I'll go with the entire world option. Uh, this is a just about perfect movie. It is wildly entertaining. It is deeply touching. It's an underdog story about the sheer power of cinema and what happens when you get bitten by the movie bug, not something I'd know anything about. So Salim Shaheen and his merry band of filmmaking associates, um, they follow him around. He's this chubby force of nature, and he's managed to make and self-distribute no fewer than 110 feature films with, you know, no budget in a country that's been at war for a very long time. 
And he can't read or write, but he acts and directs by the seat of his pants with incredible enthusiasm. And wherever he goes, he's mobbed by fans because he has told the story of the, you know, the little guy, the common man, and he acts in all of these movies. We see excerpts from them, and you know, most of them are hysterically funny. First time filmmaker Sonia Kronlin, she works for French radio, and over the last 15 years, she'd gone to Afghanistan to do reports once a year, but she tended to bring back you know, depressing stories about women disfigured by acid attacks and things like that. And someone said, you know, can't you f find the more jovial side of our, of our intrepid nation? Uh, and she found this guy. It's tempting to call her outsized, bottomlessly confident protagonist, the Ed Wood of Afghanistan. Here is the director uh, in conversation with uh, Marianne Cheval and Renaud Lafour of France 24, describing uh, the star of her film and a little taste of what he's like on set. He's someone who's on a level with them. He's like them. And like much of his audience, he's also illiterate. He tells people stories, talks about their problems in a very cottage industry way, so to speak. And he allows these people to exist visually, people who don't usually see themselves on screen. So it's a very poetic sort of cinema. And in the images we see there, they're using real guns and real <laughs> ammunition in their filming, and they go to very dangerous places. It must have been a risky to make this film for the director. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we see her there, and we know the film got finished, so we know she survived. And yet, you know, I was sort of thinking, no, don't do that. But the thing is, once you hang out with this guy, all of the precautions that Westerners usually take in Afghanistan just go out the window. And they think she's very silly, because they all believe in their heart of hearts that the time of one's death is preordained. So why bother being careful? Because, you know, when your time is up, your time is up. Um, and of special interest, I have to say uh, is Kurban Ali, this boisterously effeminate and talented performer who delights in cross-dressing in this environment, and he actually plays Shaheen's mother in the film Shaheen is making of his own early life. Any urban Western brain is going to be looking at this guy, his mannerisms, the way he talks, and going, no way is he straight, no way is he heterosexual, and yet we're sort of surprised uh, as this thing goes on. Uh, Shaheen's films are projected in what I'm told are the four still-functioning cinemas in Kabul for a few weeks, then they make their way to DVDs, 175 TV channels in Afghanistan, and uh, the director has even found a Taliban who admits, disguised, that everybody in his unit, you know, sought out these, this guy's films. Wow, okay. Well, next to a film called The Venerable W. Now, the poster's totally fooled me. I thought this was a film about a very honourable Buddhist monk, but it's quite the opposite, isn't it? Uh, the posters filled me, f fooled me too, as did the title. Um, when I took that comparative religions course in college, I never dreamed that 40 years later I would have occasion to call a specific Buddhist monk a scumbag. But that is the word that applies in this case to this man. Versatile, skilled director Barbe Schroeder has given him uh, enough rope to hang himself with that I, I feel absolutely comfortable insulting this man, even though I've never met him. He is a contemporary an objectionable person, uh, and uh, but the film leads you to believe at first that it's something else. You know, if somebody says Buddhism, you know, most of us think peace or detachment or compassion, right? Something nice. But this documentary shows us the venerable Wirathu, who was born in 1968, became a monk at age 17, and has managed to twist the tenets of Buddhism in such a way that his followers are in favor of exterminating their Muslim neighbors. Um, this kind of influence would be ironic and that, you know, an example of how silly religion can be in the way in the way you twist it if it wasn't so devastatingly sad and lethal. He is an advocate of ethnic cleansing based on lies. He preaches about how the minority of Muslims will corrupt the women and dilute the rightful race. 90% of the population of Burma, also referred to as Myanmar, follows Buddhism, which is about, you know, tolerance and nonviolence and live and let live. Only 4% of the population is Muslim, but W is a nationalist and a populist. 
and he specializes in hate speech that the UN declared as recently as April, April qualifies as crimes against humanity. It is a dense and harrowing account. Here's a taste. <laughs> Well, the Venerable W is by Barbette Schroeder, who was just the subject of a retrospective at Paris's Pompidou Centre. He's had a very wide-ranging career. How does this documentary fit into it? Uh, it fits in beautifully because it's the third installment in his uh, trilogy of terror, which began with the brilliant General Idi Amin Dada back in 1974. He followed that with Devil's Advocate about Jacques Vergès, who was a French lawyer who defended evil people. And he's directed everyone from Jeremy Irons to Ryan Gosling, but I think it's his, uh, his documentaries that show what a brave, important filmmaker he is. You might know him for Reversal of Fortune. You know. Okay, well, underway um, this week in Paris and until the end of the month in other cities around Europe, is La Nuit en Or, or Golden Nights. Um, it's a film festival for filmmakers and audiences. Absolutely, and this is a gift to the world's filmmakers from uh, France's Academy des Césars, which is the equivalent of the of the people who give out the Oscars. Um, they've basically invited the winners of every country that has a film academy's uh, best short film, so an Oscar, a BAFTA, a Goya, to come and uh, show their films in Paris. 31 different countries represented. The films are absolutely free, and they are also going to um, other countries uh, ar ar around Europe. Athens, Brussels, Lisbon, Luxembourg, Madrid, Rome, Stockholm, and and Vienna, free movies that have all won prizes. Okay, well, Lisa, thank you so much. La Nuit on Or, or Golden Nights is on in Paris this week. Please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. More news coming up on France 24 after this.